The weekend is here, and this may be the best part of it. We have definitely seen a better stretch of two days, and we'll look at that in the forecast live from GM River Days coming up. Karen. Only we can get you this close so you can actually see them. Loading up for the big Ford's fireworks show, we're going to get you on board the barge. Also an awkward situation for MSU Interim President John Engler, forced to sit and listen from just feet away as more calls are made for for his resignation. And he thought he'd found the perfect way to escape. Then this convict's wife sent him back to prison. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good Friday afternoon. Good to have you with us on First at 4. I'm Devin Skillion in for Karen today. Uh, let's start things off with a look at the forecast. Ben is at GM River Days on the first Friday of summer, but it looks like we could be in for a little bit of a washer here coming up for the weekend, Ben. Yeah, Devin, you know, this is not the nicest day that we have had down here on the riverfront. The wind is blowing, the sun is uh, yet to be found, and we've got some showers in the area as well on Fort Live Radar. Let's check out where that rain is right now. It's just off to our south and west, so in our south zone, parts of Lenaway and Monroe County getting wet. We have seen a couple lightning strikes, but for the most part, this has been all rain so far. And it looks like we'll probably see that spread a little bit further north as we get to the rest of the evening tonight. Rain chances, unfortunately, will be around this weekend. We'll talk timing on that and, of course, talk to you more about what's going on down here at River Days. Uh, the threat of rain is not dampening the crowd spirit. There's definitely a lot of folks down here enjoying the start to this weekend, and we'll have more live from the riverfront coming up in a few minutes. Devin? Good to hear it. All right, Ben, we'll be back to you shortly. Uh, now to other news of the day. The Michigan State University Board of Trustees voted to approve a five $500 million settlement between the school and the victims of Larry Nassar today. Many victims of Nassar spoke out at the meeting, ripping the school uh, and also interim president John Engler for how they were treated regarding the Nassar case. Unlike you, President Engler, I don't get paid to sit through these meetings. How are we supposed to begin on this process of becoming healthy and sound while Engler constantly ridicules us? There is nothing you can do to turn back the hands of time to take Larry Nasser's hands away from my innocence, but you can honor our bravery by saying enough is enough. Well, they say they are thankful for the settlement. Nasser's survivors, their families and supporters, uh, less than satisfied overall. For a majority of the meeting, they raised their phones with a message reading, Fire Engler. Trustee Bryant Mas uh, Masalam brought a motion to terminate Engler, but that vote failed very quickly on a vote of six to two. Other news, a man was shot this morning by intruders who broke into his home on Detroit's west side. Happened on Wormer Street in the area of Telegraph and McNichols. Police say three men rushed into the home while the homeowner was sleeping, and one of the intruders fired a shot, hitting the homeowner once in his backside. The men then fled the house and took off in a stolen black Dodge Charger. The investigation goes on, but if you've got any information about the incident, police are asking for your help. Arson investigators are looking into a string of fires on the campus of Oakland University. The latest just last night inside a women's bathroom on the third floor of South Foundation Hall. Police say two other incidents have taken place inside bathrooms on campus recently. No injuries reported in any of the fires, fortunately, but if you have any information on who might have set them, you're asked to contact police. Today's weather uh, hasn't stopped the annual gathering on Gull Island, better known as the Jobby Nooner. Partiers from across the state gather to socialize, drink and dance at the annual event. It takes place on the last Friday of June every year. Macomb County Sheriff's patrolled the area, making sure the partying didn't get too wild. The U.S. Coast Guard says attendance was down. The weather may have played a factor, but the event goes back to the uh, 1980s as a summer getaway for some of Detroit's auto workers and boating enthusiasts. Uh, efforts to reunite migrant families separated at the southern border are now underway, but we may not see an immigration reform bill from Congress for quite some time. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with the latest on that front. Kim. Hi, Devin. Good afternoon. One measure was shot down yesterday, and lawmakers were going to try again today <laughs> to find a compromise. But in his latest early morning tweet, President Trump suggested Congress should put immigration reform on hold until after the November elections, from which he predicts there will be a, quote, red wave. Now, some touching video amid all the turmoil, a reunion at Baltimore Airport between a mother from Guatemala and a young son she hasn't seen for a month since they were separated at the southern border while she was seeking political asylum. 
It's estimated about 500 of the 2,000 children separated from their parents have been reunited with them. This morning, the, the mom says she would do whatever it takes to never be separated from her son again. Meanwhile, there's frustration at the state level and among some in Congress over what they see as a lack of information on these immigrant families and lack of access to the facilities where they were held. We're canvassing all the foster care agencies in our state to find out who they have there. A complication is not only did the HHS send children to our state without our knowledge, they put a gag order on the foster care agencies and they don't want the foster care agencies telling us, which is just bizarre. One person told you one thing, another person told you another. Uh, the administration was saying all sorts of different things and the easy way to try to address some of those concerns is just, okay, let me walk in and take a look and um, they wouldn't let that happen. Now, I will say the, the individuals that were there um, pleaded with me to say, we understand, you know, we're, we're trying to provide the best services we can for these kids and I, I take them at their word at that. I don't doubt that they're doing their best. State Representative Tim Grimel sent a letter to Governor Snyder asking him and the state DHHS to provide answers about the state's involvement in the crisis involving migrant children. So Devin will keep an eye on what happens with that and we'll have more coming up on the news at five. Until then, we'll send it back to you. Yeah. All right, Kim, we'll see you then. Uh, let's take a look now first at four on stories making headlines from around the world and we'll start in Washington. A five to four decision today. The Supreme Court ruling that police generally uh, must have a search warrant before they can use cell phone records to track the movement of an individual. That ruling came in a case brought by a Michigan man convicted of, a, of robbing a string of stores and FBI agents used his cell phone record to show that he was near each store at the time of the crimes. He argued the evidence and conviction should be thrown out because the FBI did not have a search warrant. On Capitol Hill, the House of Representatives just passed legislation aimed at combating the opioid crisis. Bill passed overwhelmingly, in fact, 396 to 14. The legislation directs federal agencies to prioritize training, support, recovery centers, and conduct research to address the epidemic. One element of the bill is called Jesse's Law, and that would require medical records to list a patient's addiction history. That's named after 30-year-old Jesse Grubb, who died when her doctor prescribed her pain pills, not knowing that she had had a previous addiction. UPS workers and their union have reached a tentative five-year contract avoiding a nationwide strike. The deal negotiated with the Teamsters covers 250,000 workers, mostly drivers and package handlers. Beginning in August, the deal will boost starting pay from $10.35 an hour to $13 an hour. Drivers who currently earn $19 an hour will see their pay go up to $20.50 an hour. Union members will be voting next month on the contract proposal. Well, they'd probably rather win the World Cup, but Sweden being recognized as the most reputable country in the world. That is according to the annual ranking by the Reputation Institute, which calculates its rankings by surveying more than 58,000 people in France, Germany, Italy, the UK, Japan, the US and Canada and Russia on the 55 largest countries in the world. The ranking examines things like ethics, corruption and technology. By the way, the United States ranked 34th on the list and that's actually four spots higher than it was last year. All right, just three days to go. Ford Fireworks 2018 edition nearly upon us, and the surest sign of that can be found along the Detroit River. Paula Tutman has a look at the barges and how the weather is helping the efforts to get everything in place. So, of course, it's that time of year for that most amazing show, right? It's the time when we all come together with light and sound and a great big boom. But, of course, before we get to this, all right, fellas, thanks. Appreciate it. We've got to start here. This is the mortar, this is the shell. The task of packing bombs and shells is daunting in the heat, but today, with a cool breeze off the Detroit River, it makes the barge work so much better. It's not too hot, not too cold, uh, it's not raining, touch wood, yeah. and uh, so we're able to, to really go fast. Patrick Bro is the choreographer for Zambelli, and for this year's Ford Fireworks, he has still managed to sneak in some pretty nice surprises. Two different types of, uh, of shells that, that's being used. They're the same diameter, but there's a lot more stuff in that one than there is in this one. But this one breaks in a perfect circle, uh, in a perfect sphere in the sky, where this one disperses different type of, uh, of products in, in the sky, but it doesn't do that round chrysanthemum or flowery type of, uh, of fireworks. 
In the next three days, 10,000 bombs and shells are carefully packed for a maximum spectacle and boom. I don't know how to dance. Well, I'm really horrible at it. You, you know, at the dismay of my mother, who was a great dancer. <laughs> but I do imagine dancing, so I've got a few sections in the show where you'll see some, some comets dancing, you know, just I'm going left to right and right to left and crisscrossing. I call that uh, ground dances myself. And this year's show is designed to bring all of us together in the common agreement that this is just one of these times. Detroit shines and sparkles. We've added more. There's going to be more colors. There's more things happening. Uh, I'm going to give you one secret. Can I give you one? At Just least. one. One secret. Get your seatbelt on at the very beginning. We're we're going to we're going to blast off. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a great tease. I think so. These Zambelli workers, they have been they've been on jam all day long. As you can see right now, it is quitting time. Believe it or not, as cool as the weather is, it does help them move faster. But they do have to stop, not because of the wind. Of course, the wind kind of makes my wig want to just blow off. But not because of the wind or the rain, but because of the threat of lightning. But they'll be right back at it. And here comes the rain. They'll be right back at it because they are on a deadline. Debbie? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it sounds like they're from Tony Michaels, Paula. We're talking about starting with the finale. Going to switch things up this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They switch it up. They, they do a lot of switching up. Uh, every year they say, oh, the show's going to be bigger and better. And you know what? <laughs> Dag nabbit, every year it is. That's exactly right. Tough challenge, but they somehow raise to it every year. All right, Paula, that's great. Uh, Local 4, of course, is your exclusive home for the Ford Fireworks on Monday night. We hope you'll join us. Our uh, program gets underway live from the Detroit Riverfront starting at 8, 8, 8 p.m. Still ahead first at 4. Ever ducked out early for your lunch break? Maybe come back a few minutes late? Well, one worker in Japan got caught, and his bosses told the entire country. We'll explain that. Also, the new, important new test researchers have come up with for breast cancer in hopes of helping a segment of the population that has been getting hit extra hard. We'll be right back.